Hi everyone and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. We're here on location at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit. My name is Kate Warnock and I'm delighted to bring you Bob Nesta. Bob, welcome to the interview. Thank you, Kate. We're happy to have you. So Bob, you are the president and CEO of the Rewired Group. I am. All right, you are also the author of the Jobs to be Done Theory. I was hoping you can explain what this theory is. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm one of the architects. It's a, it's a, okay. it's a brain trust of a lot of different people who basically put it together. Okay. But the, the basic premise is that people don't buy products or services they actually hire them mm -hmm. and so by taking a, a step back and looking at their life and understanding how products and services fit in their life we can actually understand a better way in which to design products um, ultimately people make trade-offs and consumers actually can't tell you what they want or how they want it and so part of it is us understanding the struggling moments in their lives and figuring what those are out and then basically us coming up with the innovations to help them make progress in their life is this something more than just addressing pain points is yeah. this you know really a better understanding of context so of, of what the consumer journey is yeah so it's pain points it's so it's what we call context and outcome so it's a okay. combination of both and most time people will have here's the need state somebody is in but mm -hmm. they don't talk about the outcome they want mm -hmm. or they'll talk about the outcomes people are seeking but they won't talk about the the, the actual uh, context that they're in and value is really a combination of both con, uh, context and outcome. All right, perfect lead into my next question. So here at the summit, plenty of attention is being given to defining value right. across the health industry. Is the consumer's definition of value factored in equally? Uh, if for jobs or just for uh, for the industry? In the industry overall. In the industry. Yeah. I, I actually don't think it is. I think yeah. the fact is, is that, that, that they're missing a lot of the, th the, the actual uh, progress that consumers are trying to make. And so part of, the, part of the, the power of jobs in this case is really about getting people to um, actually start to understand the journeys that they take personally and the struggling moments. And value is dependent upon the context that they have and the outcome that they seek both together. So if I uh, start here and I want to go here, I value it differently than if I start here and want to go there. Okay. Or, and what happens is we end up uh, averaging everything and to be honest we end up over engineering or over designing things and so mm -hmm. a lot of cases consumers, especially at the low end of the market, it, all you have to be is better than nothing. So when they don't have service at all and you give them something, a lot of times it can be as simple as possible. Most times people want to add everything in so they make it like this big and it's like, no, they just want something that big. And so part of it is taking into account that context and outcome actually helps us understand value much better. And so you're really also helping to make sure that your, your clients are allocating resources appropriately. Exactly, right? exactly. Right. So, so a lot of cases, most disruption happens at the low end of the market where yeah. people aren't served at all. Yeah. So nine times out of ten, we can go in and talk to about something they've already created and target it towards the low end of the market Just and, and, and literally be able it. to and rescale it, but actually make it worse, but actually it does it better. <laughs> That's a fascinating way to look at it, yeah, but yeah. you know, but you know, what if what you're doing is addressing what the consumer actually wants, then exactly. that is the better product in the outcome. Exactly. In the long exactly. Run. All right, we're going to go back now to um, your Twitter, your Twitter account. Yeah. Um, you recently retweeted a quote from Jeff Bezos: "If we can keep our competitors focused on us while we stay focused on customers, yes. we'll turn out all right." Yes. What's your advice for the health industry as Amazon, Apple, and Google set their sights on the health so consumer? So I think I think there's a couple of things. One is focus uh, on the consumer struggling moments. Uh, the more they can actually focus on, on high impact struggling moments, the fact is, is they'll be able to actually innovate faster. I think the other thing is to figure out how to do, to prototype faster. I, the, the, the healthcare companies that I've worked with here, the, they, they just take so long to do a, what I call a rep, where to me, I need, I need uh, sometimes 20 reps in order to get an innovation right. right. The reality is like, it's very hard to basically do any reps in the, in, the, in the healthcare industry. So by starting at the low end of the market, I think you can actually do a lot more, a lot faster. That's really interesting, and I, and I appreciate the fact that you're looking at the low end of the market because that may not be where the well, natural attention would right. be. That's right. That's right. Well, most people want to want to try to minimize the low end of the market, and right. the fact is they're the most underserved, and actually most the people who actually need need the most progress. And right. so, in a lot of cases, figuring out how to serve the low end of the market better is actually where I think the opportunity lies. The example to me is is uh, Mini Clinic, right? Mm -hmm. The fact is that it's well, it's just a clinic, is this, but the fact is it's changing behavior dramatically by saying if you interview people about it, they actually don't even talk about how people do to, like wait. You say, well, how long did you wait? Like, mm, I don't think I waited very little time. The reality is they waited two hours, but they got a text when to go to the store to get to see it. And so they don't count that as waiting time anymore. So part of it is being able to understand you can learn a lot of things at this low end of the market that doesn't seem like it's big value add, but the reality is it's it's uh, allowed to change behavior. So it seems to me that you're really breaking your client's mindset out of the corporate or industry mindset that they've maybe been mired in. You know, we had yeah. um, Terry Stone on and she was saying that part of what Oliver Wyman has been seeing is that 
disruption has been so incremental in that the players are just kind of stuck. And they she are. said, and we need to nudge. We need to That's push right. them out of this because we have people like Amazon That's right. that are knocking on the door. So. Oh, and their, their ability to do reps at the low end will be much faster right. than ours. And right. so all of a sudden, we, we'll literally be able to just talk about it. And they literally will have, uh, in they're one on week, fifth rep. It, it, they're on their fifth <laughs> rep in a right. week. And you're just like, we can't even do it in three months. So, right. so to me, that's it's, it's very similar to education. Education has the same kind of problem because mm. they can't innovate because they have a school year. And so they have the same kind of underlying artificial, problems. Artificial, right. Exactly. It's yeah, very yeah. artificial. So wh what I'm doing is I'm innovating in the adult ed market basically the same way because we can get faster reps and understand how to teach people pivot tables way faster yeah, that yeah. allows us then to bring it back to... Uh, K through 12 curriculum. Well, Bob, it's fascinating. Yep. I, I love the conversation that we had here because yep. it's really unique from all the other com um, yep. conference or, or uh, interviews we've had. So yeah, thank you for joining thank you. us. It was thank you. An thank education. You so, so, Bob, Good. thank you for thank joining you. us here. This is Kate Warnock. We're going to be up live with another interview in just a moment.